Okay, after some technical difficulties, let's try another time. So uh, in the last section, uh, we looked at the base estimate for the normal distribution. And uh, in a way, we were not very su successful because all we got out was a reinterpretation of the Tikhonov method. Um, also, I think I forgot to note that uh, for the normal distribution, the base estimate is, of course, also the maximum likelihood estimate. You just have to plug this into the definition of the conditional uh, probability. And then you find that mu is also the maximum likelihood solution. Okay, um, so uh, let's do something different. And uh, now we're going to emission tomography where things are a little bit different. And we want to look at the maximum likelihood approximation for that. Now, our model is a little bit different because this time uh, it's not uh, we introduce random by um, looking at noise, but uh, rather the measurement vector that we measure is the realization of a random variable uh, which is Poisson distributed. So uh, that was the model that we came up with for emission tomography. So let me repeat that. So we have something like, uh, so we're trying to find an image, again, an image F. What we measure is some uh, operator A applied to F. Again, think of A as the radon transform for emission tomography. And uh, what we get as a measurement is the realization of a random variable G and that G is Poisson distributed and uh, that, that's a vector G and uh, GI is Poisson distributed and the uh, parameter lambda I of uh, G uh, of that Poisson distribution is AF in the ith <laughs> component. Okay, um, so uh, we already derived the conditional uh, the, uh, the conditional probability. So the probability that F is the true image provided uh, that F is the true image provided uh, excuse me, that F is the uh, uh, true image provided that uh, gamma is a G tilde. Um, no, excuse me. The measure, the probability that we measure f when uh, the vector g tilde is measured, and it's gamma over here because I just copied that formula exactly from what we showed, is given by the product over all i e to the minus a f i a f i to the g i tilde and g i tilde factorial, and uh, that's what we call l of s or the likelihood. Of, uh, of measuring f when uh, g tilde is measured. Okay, the maximum likelihood, uh, of course, we're just uh, looking for the maximum of L of f. So fml is defined as the arc max of overall f L of f, where f goes over all permissible images. Okay, uh, let me add at this point, um, now we are somehow losing the idea that we used with a normal distribution that we could also view f as a random variable. And uh, we don't do that at this point. But if we did that, uh, then the likelihood of measurement of measuring f would somehow be the likelihood of f times uh, the, um, the probability that f appears at all. So we could also factor that, that in here, but um, let's stick with this model over here. So for us, F is a fixed image and is not taken from, uh, from a pool of images and we don't view that as a random process as well. Okay, so um, it can be shown that minus L is convex. So minus L has a unique minimum. Um, and so, um, L has, um, so uh, the maximum of L is globe, all maxima of L are global and actually there's only one maximum. So it has only one extremal point. And uh, so if we find one uh, maximum or at least one extremal point, then it must be a maximum. Okay, so that's nice. 
And um, the next thing is uh, trying to maximize this one or trying to minimize this, this guy over here is quite difficult because of the products here. And so uh, we do something that's usually done. The log is monotonous. And uh, so that means that if L has a maximum in some point F, then log L has also a maximum in F. And uh, so instead of maximizing L of F, we maximize the logarithm of L of F, which we call small L of F. And that's also called the log likelihood. And since that appears so often, that's why it has a special name. Okay, uh, now what is the logarithm? Well, the taking the logarithm, of course, the product over here becomes, uh, becomes a sum. Uh, then we need to take uh, uh, the log of all these internal terms over here. So that will be something like GA tilde times AFI. So that's uh, times log of AFI. So that's the first one over here. We need to add the log of this one over here. That's the minus, that's just minus AFI. And then we need to subtract the log of GI factorial. Okay, now summing this all up over all I and taking this one over out over here, we see that uh, this sum of all log I, GI tilde factorials, they don't depend on F. And uh, since we just want to maximize L of F, uh, we can forget about this because this is just, this is just a, constant, uh, a constant term. So we can forget about this one and we define L of F as this term over here. Okay, since we want to maximize that, we'll probably be interested in the derivative. So uh, let's take one of these terms and take the derivative with respect to fj. So d, d over dfj of this term over here. That would be something like where well, gi, uh, gi tilde is at the front here and the log over here. Uh, that becomes 1 over AF in the ith component. And now AFI derivative with respect to FJ would be AIJ. So that one would be something like GI tilde times IAJ over AF in the ith component. And uh, then we have uh, that minus AFI over here and taking the derivative with respect to J, that just becomes minus IIJ. Okay, so uh, that's kind of normal. Now we sum over all i and uh, look at the gradient, then uh, you immediately find that this is nothing or can easily be, can be written in a simple way, like a transpose g, g over a f minus one. And uh, I'll have to explain what I mean by that. G is uh, uh, the g tilde, excuse me. I think I, from now on, I always forgot the G tilde. So this is G tilde, G tilde over AF. And G tilde is a measurement vector. AF is also a measure, a vector in measurement space. So the division is meant pointwise here. So uh, you define, you divide every uh, single component and um, every single dimension and you get um, uh, again get a vector in measurement space. Now this one over here, uh, that's a vector of ones also in measurement space. And uh, now doing the multiplication over here, you find that this is exactly the same as this one. Okay, um, now, we would like to have something like, uh, we, we want to find uh, the minimum, the maximum for F. And uh, now uh, in emission tomography, uh, generally F must be larger or equal to zero. Uh, I mean, that's uh, probably quite, uh, quite understandable. Um, that is the concentration of radioactive tracer and that definitely cannot be negative. And even up, you see that even if f is zero, then uh, it's not quite clear what the logarithm of if over here should be. So uh, definitely f should be larger or equal to zero. And we even require f larger than zero here. So uh, that means that this one is always positive and it all makes sense what I did up to now. Okay, um, so uh, 
As I said, FML, the maximum likelihood solution, maximizes the log of the, uh, the log likelihood function. So if F was unrestricted, it's clear that the gradient of L uh, in the point FML should be zero, right? So that's a necessary condition. Okay, um, since we are now restricted, we must deal with the Kuntaka conditions. And uh, that's probably, if you've been to the optimization lecture, then you'll be uh, very, uh, then this will be, um, uh, this will be very familiar. I want to quickly motivate what Kuntaka says. Uh, let's take, uh, let, let's assume that we're trying to maximize a function, uh, I think, uh, that we're trying to maximize a function h, but uh, not over the whole plane, but uh, just in the upper right quadrant where x1 and x2 are larger than zero, larger or equal to zero. Okay, um, and so I just realized I need f. Let's take it this way. Um, now, um, let's assume that um, the h has a minimum in uh, this point x over here, so in the center of that part of the plane. Well, since I can go up and down and left and right, in no direction may the uh, may h become larger because h uh, should have a maximum at this point. So that immediately means that the gradient of h at this point should be zero, and that's for all components. Now, let's assume for a second that um, we have a minimum at uh, in the green point here. Okay, there we have that x1 is equal to zero. Now let's look at the, uh, at the x2 direction. So I can go up and down here. So uh, uh, if that is a maximum over here, there's only one chance the derivative of h with respect to x, x2 must be zero. But on the other hand, uh, for, um, for the x1 direction, I cannot go left because x1 large, uh, smaller than zero is forbidden. And uh, so um, I can only go to the right-hand side. And for now for h to, be, uh, um, to have a maximum in that green point x, uh, we only need that the uh, function decays with the indirection x1. So if I go right, the function must decay, then that's, uh, then, that's, um, then that's the condition for being a maximum. So the condition on the right-hand side is that dh over dx1 is smaller or equal to zero. Okay, so uh, the necessary condition is that um, dh over dxk is zero or that xk is zero, right? And that's for x1 and x2 over here, but you can do it for arbitrary directions. Okay, so um, if we have a restriction to the positive quadrant, then this over here is true. Okay, but that means that either, either xk, if, if either xk or the kth component of gradient of h in the point x is zero, that means that x times gradient h of x is zero, where the, again, the multiplication of the two vectors, which I have here, is just pointwise multiplication, right? And that's zero because either, either xk is zero or dh, dh over dxk is zero. So. Uh, um, so that's uh, exactly the same as this one. Okay, um, now in our model, we have exactly the same thing. And um, I just plug this in. FML is the point where we uh, expect the maximum. So uh, either FML is uh, zero in one component or the gradient of L in that component is zero. So that means that the product of FML and gradient L in the point FML is zero. And again, as I said, this is pointwise over here. So each component is multiplied and then you get the result. Now plugging in what we already computed for the gradient, uh, this means that FML times A transpose G, G over A FML minus one is zero. And uh, well, I just uh, multiply this out and this is FML times A transpose G over FML minus FML times A transpose one. 
Okay, now dividing this by one over a transpose one, again, formally just by uh, just in each component, we have that FML is the same as FML times one over a transpose one G over a FML. And uh, let me say, well, on what the multiplications are. A FML over here, that's a normal matrix vector multiplication. G over A FML, these are two vectors and they are um, divided in each component. This one over A, a transpose one, this is a pointwise uh, division. This is a pointwise multiplication and also this one over here is a pointwise multiplication. So whenever we have the multiplication of two vectors here, that's meant pointwise. Okay, um, however, this means that FML is a fixed point of the right-hand side. Okay, so now think of the simplest algorithm that you learned in numerical linear algebra to find a fixed point of the right-hand side. Okay, so you take the fixed point algorithm, right? And uh, so that's exactly what we do. So we apply it, and that means that we start with some vector F0, some initial image F0, which is typically a vector of just ones. And we define Fk plus 1 as Fk times 1 over A transpose 1, G over A Fk. This is exactly the implementation for the right. I just inserted Fk on the right-hand side. And uh, this is the expectation maximization algorithm or EM algorithm that was, uh, I think, devised in, by Dempster in 1977. And uh, the proof that this actually converges in many, con in, uh, in many cases uh, was given by Shep and Vardy in 1985. So maybe you now expect the proof, uh, and uh, I'm not going to give it. I'm going to uh, give you um, a um, hint to the literature in the, in the script. But uh, again, I had one very technical proof today, and this one is even more technical. It's completely uninteresting. You just do the math. You apply Jensen's inequality. That's the only thing that comes up. And uh, I think we don't have to do this at this point. Rather, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you how this can be implemented. And uh, the question, of course, that we ask is, does it really make a difference? So if we compare, for example, Tikhonov and this EM algorithm, where one of these is now uh, not appropriate because it relies on normally uh, distributed variables and we compare it with the statistical algorithm that's in a way correct, um, does it make a difference? And we'd see that it definitely does.